Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.J. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, I thank you, Father, that there's a remnant that, that wants to follow everything and everything you do. They're not perfect. There's no such thing as 100% perfect human being on this earth. But as we're in this flesh, there's no such thing. But what you look is surpass those things. And you look on the inner workings of the person. And if they're walking with you, if they're, if they're in a relate, relationship with their creator, and they're doing what is right and righteous in your sight, the best of their ability, and they're subduing their flesh, the best of their ability every day through the spirit of God's help and the word of God's help. That's what you look for. You look for people that will say yes to their creator, yes to his will. And whatever it is, great and small, one day maybe smaller, maybe another day bigger. But we say yes to your will, Father God. Father, I pray for the lukewarm and there, there's so many. I pray for them to get on fire and stop being lukewarm. Pray for the world to not be world, worldly and get saved. Be part of the, pro, uh, the solution instead of the problem of being in the world and in darkness. And I thank you, Father, and I praise you for all things. Father, we need a miracle. We need a miracle. There's too many unsaved people in this world. There's too many unsaved people. There's too many lukewarm people. Father, we need a miracle. Father, I pray, I pray to your heart this day that you send the ministering angels like never before. And I pray with all my heart, Father. Father, there's too many lukewarm people and too many... People that are in the world. Father, please send many, many more ministering angels to minister to these people. All kinds of people from all around this world. Thank you, Father. You're such a faithful Father, God, and faithful Spirit, Jesus Christ. We love you, Yeshua, our El Shaddai. Amen. All right, so we're going to do some more of the book of Joshua, and it was... Extra, it's called extra biblical because it was part of the biblical canon that was taken out because the people that took it out shouldn't have, but they did. Um, but it is so that would be called extra biblical. Um, and so it's the book of Jasher we're going to look at. And Jasher actually is not just meaning a name, but it's it's actually the phrase of the meaning of Jasher. It means the people of righteousness that God raised up. And so we look at those people and say, not 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 in a esteemed way, just a way like, wow, God used them. And God did great things because they yielded and they did these things that were right in God's sight, even though they weren't perfect, you know. But because they love God, because they wanted to have a relationship with God and even their unperfectness that they all have, that we all have. God used them, even in their imperfections. Amen. And so this is what we learn about this book. This really long book, by the way. But it, has, it, it covers quite a lot of the ins and outs of things. Amen. So it's Jasher. Shema tell... Uh, Telfala, Telfafa, Shema Telfafa, which means in Hebrew to English means heard prayers. We're going to see how the prayers of Jacob and and Isaac were answered, and and for the most part, I would put uh, Shimon in there as well, and, and Levi agreeing with his brother there. They're almost like twins. Um, and where we're going to go is Jasher chapter 35, 1 through 25, 36, 1 through 38. And we're going to see this, this unfold. And uh, if, if you get ministered from a certain point, just say, thank you, Lord. That touched my heart. And, and allow God to just minister to you on that, okay? Because that's how he does. I mean, it could be something that 
normally when, but because the ministering of the holy angels are there, want you to see something that, that's being read here. Amen. So let's start. And all the kings of the Amorites came and took their stand in the field to, to consult their counsel on what to be done to the sons of Jacob. For they were still afraid of them, saying, Behold, two of them slew the whole city of Shechem. And Yahweh heard the prayers of Isaac and Jacob. Can we hear amen? Yeah, we heard the prayers. If we don't pray to God, how, then how can he answer some things? You know, there are righteous prayers, good prayers for our, our brothers and sisters out there. Or maybe our, our natural family, our extended family, or maybe even someone across the world that needs our prayers. We just don't know who it is, but we feel like we need to pray. Well, it's probably because there's someone in Africa or someone in China that's been abused that needs our prayers. So always remember that. God will answer those prayers if they're good prayers, they're righteous prayers, they're not selfish prayers like, oh, greed of prayers and all that. God doesn't answer greed. He answers non-selfish prayers that we pray and humble prayers for ourselves that, you know, that, that are uh, need to be prayed, you know, as well. And he filled the hearts of all these kings advisors with great fear and terror. See, it was God that put terror and fear and these kings that were trying to hurt God's people at this time. Amen. And we can set ourselves in there if we're saved and we're living in God's covenant this day. Amen. Uh, terror that that uh, on uh, Kamali. And are you silly this day or is there no understanding uh, in you that you will fight with the Hebrews and why will you take and delight in your own destruction this day see the spirit of God the spirit of El Shaddai which is Jesus Christ was putting some fear in these kings right here yes it was Jesus in the spirit yes of who he really was El Shaddai he was he was ministering these kings of that they bear Watch themselves and not touch God's anointed ones that He that have a relationship with them. Amen. You will that you would uh, fight with the Hebrews, and why will you take delight in your own destruction this day? Behold, two of them came to the city of Shechem without fear or terror, and they killed all the inhabitants of the city, that no man stood up against them. How will you be able to fight them all? Truly, you know that their God is exceedingly fond of them and have done many things for them, such as have not been done from days of old. And amongst all the false gods of the nations, there is none can be due like unto this mighty deeds. Surely he will deliver their father Abraham, the Hebrews from the, the, the hand of Nimrod, and from the hands of all these people who have many times sought to slay him. He delivered him, and also from the fire in which King Nimrod had cast him. And this, this God delivered him from it all. He's talking about Abraham here. Testifying, the Spirit of God's testifying what he's done already, amen, and what he will do. And who else can do like, like? Surely it was Abraham who slew the five kings of Elam when they had touched his brother's son, who in those days dwelt in Sodom. He's talking about Lot here on that. And, and took his uh, servant, that was faithful in his house and, and, and flew his men. And they uh, surpassed the kings of Elam who one night and killed them and restoring his brother's son all his property which they had taken from him. And surely you know that God of these Hebrews is much delighted 
with them. And they are also delighted with him. Him meaning the word of God, the, the, the Messiah, the, you know, the spirit of God. Amen. For they know that he delivers them from all their enemies. Amen. And behold, through the, his love towards God, Abraham took only the procession of the son and intentions to bring to him up as a burnt offering to his God. And had it not been for God who prevailed him from doing this, he would have done it through his love to his God. And God saw all his works and swore to him, promised him that he would deliver his sons and all his seed from every trouble that would befall them. Because he had done this thing and through his love for his God. See, we got to have love for God. And we love God, we'll do his commandments. Amen. Because we love God. We're not doing that on our duty. We're doing it because we love God. It's like Abraham loved God. And he and he did these things. And he and he did what God wanted. Amen. He wasn't disobedient. If he was disobedient all the time to God, do you think Abraham would have been even written in the Bible? No. Because he loved God. He he did what was righteous in God's sight. Amen. Abraham did. And God saw all the works and swore unto him and promised him that he would deliver his sons and all his seed from ever, ever trouble that would befall them. Because he had done this thing and through his love towards his God, strived his and strived his com compassion for his children. And have you not heard what their God did to the Pharaoh, O king of Egypt? This is a, an a older king we're talking of, Egypt. And to Amalek, king of the Ger, through talking, taking Abraham's wife, who said to her, she is my sister, and at least they might slay him on account of her. And thinking of the talking her for a wife, and God did unto them, there are people, all that you heard of, and heard we also saw with our own eyes that Esau, the brother Jacob, came to him with 400 men with to intent to slay him. For he called to, to mind that he had taken away from his, his father's blessing. And he went to meet him uh, then and came to Syria to smite the mother of his child and who delivered him from the from his hands of but his God to whom he trusts and delivered him from the hands of his brother and also from the hands of his enemies. And surely he again will pro protect him. Who does not know that it was their God who inspired them with strength to do to the town of Shechem the evil which they you heard of? Could it then be with their own strength that two men could destroy such a large city of Shechem had it not been for their God in whom they trust? And he says, did unto them all this to slay the inhabitants of the city. And can you not prevail over them who have come forth towards from the city to fight, which the whole of them, even if a thousand times as many more should come to your assistance? Surely you know that to understand that you do not come to fight with them, but you come to make war with their God, Yahweh, who has made the choice of them. And you have therefore all come this day to destroy. Now therefore refrain from this evil which you have 
endure to reign upon your own selves, and it will be better for you not to go to battle with them, although they are but few in numbers, because their God is with them. And when the kings of Ammonites heard all the words of the the avenger, their hearts were filled with terror, and they were afraid of the sons of Jacob, and with would not fight against them. And then in, indeed their ears to, to the words of their advisors. And they listened to all their words and, and the words of the council of great pleasing of the kings. And they, they did so. And the kings turned and refrained from the sons of Jacob. For they uh, does not approach them and make war with them. And they were greatly afraid of them, and their hearts melt within them, and their fear was with them. For this process for Yahweh to them, for, for he heard the prayers of his servant Isaac and Jacob, for they trusted in him. Him, when it's talking about God, and it doesn't matter where it is. It's talking about the Word of God underlining and the Messiah underlining under that. Amen. They trusted in the Word of God. They trusted in God Almighty. Amen. And all these kings returned with their camps on that day and each to its own city. And they did not at that time fight the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob kept their stations that day till evening opposed. The Mount of uh, Shimon, and seeing that these kings did not come to fight against them, the sons of Jacob returned home. And at that time Yahweh appeared unto Jacob, saying, Arise, go to Bethel, and remain there, and make there an altar to Yahweh, who appeared unto thee who delivered thee and all thy sons from afflictions. And Jacob rose up with his sons and all the belongings to him. And they went and, and came to Bethel, accounting to the words of Yahweh. And Jacob was ninety-nine years old. And when he went up to Bethel, and Jacob and his sons and all his people were with him, Remained in Bethel and Luz, and and be there and built an altar to Yahweh, who appeared to unto him. And Jacob and his sons remained in Bethel six months. And at the time of the death of Deborah, the daughter Urz, the uh, and nurse of of Rebekah, who had been with Jacob, and Jacob buried her beneath Bethel, under an oak that was there. And Rebekah, the daughter um, of, of, of Bethel, the, the mother of, of Jacob, also died at the time of Hebron. The same to uh, Kareth Ar Arba, the, 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 she was buried in the cave of a match pala, which uh, the Ab Ab Abraham had brought, brought from the children of Heth. And the life of Rebekah was 133 years, and she died. And then Jacob heard that his mother, Rebekah, was dead. He wept bitterly for his mother and made a great mourning for her and for Deborah, her nurse, beneath the oak. And he called the name of the place Olen uh, Beth-ith and Laban the uh, Syrian died in those days and for God smote him because of his transgressions of the covenant that exceeded between him and Jacob. And Jacob was 100 years old when Yahweh appeared unto him. 
and blessed him and called his name Israel, the Prince of God. And Rachel, the wife of Jacob, conceived in those days. And at that time, Jacob and all the belongings to him journeyed from Bethel to go to his father's house in Hebron. And, and with they were going to the road. And there was yet but a little way to come to uh, Ephrath. And Rachel bare a son, and she called, and she had hard labor, and she died. This is this is Benjamin. Now Benjamin, Benjamin is the correct way of saying it, by the way. And and Jacob buried her in the in the way to Ethrath, which is in which is in Beth uh, uh, Bethlehem. And he set a pillar unto her grave, which is there unto this day. And the day of Rachel was. Uh, 45 years and she died and uh, Jacob called the name of his son that was born to him which Rachel bared unto him Benjamin for he was born to him in the land on the right hand and it was after that death of Rachel that Jacob pitched his tent in the in the tents of her handsmaid, uh, Be Bella. And Ro uh, Reuben was jealous for his mother Leah on account of this. And he was filled with anger and rose up in anger and went to enter the tent of Bella. And he hence uh, removed his father's bed. And at that time, the portion of the birthright together with the kingly and priestly offering, was removed from the son of Reuben. For he had profaned his father's bed, and the birthright was given unto Joseph, and the kingly offering to uh, Judah, and the priestly offering to Levi. So the birthright in general was given to Joseph, the kingly to Judah, and the, the priestly to Levi. So there you go. And the priestly unto Levi, because Reuben defined his father's bed. And these are the generations of Jacob, and where the born to him, and Abedoram, uh, the sons of Jacob were twelve. And the sons of Lehi, Leha were Reuben, the firstborn, Shimon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and their sister Dinah. And the sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Zelpah, Leah's handsmaid were Gad and Asher. And the sons of Bilai, of Rachel's handsmaid, were Dan and Naphtali. These are the sons of Jacob, which were born to him, and Padan Aram. And Jacob and his sons, all belonging to, to his, him in a journey, came to Mili, Mary, which is uh, Kareth Arab, that is in Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned, and Jacob with him, and the sons and all that belonging to him, uh, dwelled with their father in Hebron. And his brother Esau and his sons and all his belongings to him went to the land of Shur, and dwelling there, and possessing the land of Shear. And the children of Esau were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly to the land of Seir. And there, these are the generations of Esau that were born to him, to the land of Canaan. The sons of Esau were five. 
uh, Ada born Tisa, his firstborn, uh, Eliphaz, and she also born to him uh, Real and uh, Halma born to him uh, uh, Jerush, uh, Yalem, and Korah. These are the children of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. The sons of, of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, were Taman, Omer, Zappo, Gammon, Kenaz, and Amalaz. And the, the sons of Roel were uh, uh, Natchith, Zerech, Shema, and Meza. And the sons of Jerush were Timnah, Ovel, Jeth, and the sons of Yoam were Al Allah, uh, Peter, and Kenaza. And the sons of Korah were Temen, Mebers, Megadel, and uh, Aram. These are the families of the sons of Esau, according to their dukedom in the land of Seir. And these are the names of the sons of Seir that the Horites inhabit the land of Seir. Uh, Lotan, Shobel, Zebel, Ennel, Dishan, Elzer, and uh, Dishan, meaning of the seven sons. And the children of uh, Lotan were Hore, Herman, and their sister Timi. And that is Timi who uh, came to Jacob and his sons, and they would not give heir to her. And she went and became the concubine to Eleazar, the son of Esau. And, and she bore him and the Amalekites. The Amalekites come from, from that. And the sons of Shobel were Al Alvan, Manahath, Alban, Shubhath, oh, and Oman, and the, and the sons of Zebel were Aja, Anna, and, and this was that of Anna that was found in uh, Lamin in the wildness then fled to the ass of uh, Billing, his father. And within, he was feeding his father's donkey he had led when he went the wilderness at a different time to feed him. And there was a day that he brought the, them to one of his the deserts on the seashore, opposite of the wilderness, of the people, where hence he was feeding them. Behold, a very heavy storm came from the other side of the seashore and rested unto the, the, the donkey that were fed there, and they all stood still. And after about 120 great terrible animals came out of the wilderness, and at the other side of the sea, they came to the place where the donkey were, and they saw a place themselves there. And those animals from their mess downwardly, and there they shaped of the children of men, and from their middle upwardly, and some like likeness of a bear, and some likeness of a, 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 a a pharaoh, 
and and the top behind them between the shoulder reached down to the earth like the tail of a uh, uh, Demerith. And these animals came and mounted a, and rode unto the, these donkeys and led them away. And they went away unto this day. And one of these animals approached uh, Anna, uh, Anna, Anna, yeah, and smote at him with his tail, and then fled from that place. So it sounds like it's some kind of a weird, uh, rare uh, type of a big lizard of some sort. It's probably super rare these days. And then he saw his work, and he exceedingly was afraid of his life. And he fled and escaped to the city. And he related to his sons and brothers that had happened to him. And many men went to seek for the donkeys, but could not find them. And Anna had his brothers went no more to, to that place for that day following. And they were greatly afraid of their lives. And the, the children of uh, Anna, the the son of Seir were uh, Dishon and his sister uh, and Lebanon. The children of Dishon were Hamda, Ishban, Ithran, and Cheran. And the children of uh, Ezer were uh, Belham, Zarezen, and Achan. And the children of Deshem were Urz and Arez. These are the families of the children of Seir and Horat. According to their dukedom in the land of Seir, and Esau and his children dwelling in the land of Seir and Horat, in the habits of the land, and they were they had uh, possessed it and were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob and his children all belonged to them, dwelling with their father Isaac in the land of Canaan, as Yahweh had commanded Abraham their father. Amen. So you can see a little history here, but we can see the lesson of praying to God and saying, God, we, we love you, we cherish you, thank you. And, and, and ask and cry out like like Elias, Lazarus did in the New Testament. He cried out to God and said, God, I need you, you know? And everybody thought it was weird, but he went, Yeshua HaMashiach went right to him and said, okay, I'm here, what you need? And and so did so did uh, God do for the, the sons of Jacob because Isaac and Jacob, and I, I really believe Simone was part of that prayer, all pray to God and and God answered them. Amen. And God will answer our prayers, our, our righteous prayers that are not selfish prayers. Okay. But righteous prayers of, of truly our hearts right with God and saying, God, we we need prayer for this situation or maybe the storm or whatever it is. And God will answer, you know, in due time, you know. But remember, he, He's looking for people. They're called by his name, amen, not called by the names of these, these uh, nations, but called by his name, amen. we got to remember we're God's people before anything else, amen. You're saved, you're born again, you're walking in an upright relationship with God. You're God's people before you're any other nation that you live in. You're God's people, amen, and so you got to focus that first God's kingdom, Amen. Remember what Scripture says, and and in, uh, in Matthew it says that seek ye first the kingdom of God. It doesn't say seek ye first the kingdom you live in. No, it says seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then all these things will be ministered and added unto us, Amen. So let's seek God's kingdom first before anything else. Amen. Remember, God's a jealous God. He says he won't have any before him or after him. That, And he also says that 
we should have God first place, even before our husbands, our wives, our our children, our dads and moms, anything. God comes first place. Amen. And and so we gotta remember that. And so our relationship is the most important thing that you gotta remember you have with God. And then everything else comes secondly. And then, you know, last place, your own life. Amen. Thirdly. So we got to understand this. We got to understand these principles. Amen. So let us be God's people today and not go astray to the foreign uh, kingdoms of this world that are destined for judgment for the most part, unless they, they repent of that. If they repent, then God will, instead of sending a judgment, will might send a blessing like he always says through his prophets and emissaries in the Bible. Amen. So let us pray. Those of you that are lost in this world, you can you can be saved today. God wants to save your soul from, from the pit of hell that you're living right now in your nations. God loves you. God paid a price for you. He, he allowed his spirit, his precious inner workings, his spirit to take a flesh of a human being and call himself Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, and die on the cross and, and became that very living tree of life through that cross. And he became that second Adam and finished the work of Abraham doing so, his ministry that he had for us representing not himself, but all of us as he did those things. Amen. So so that you can be part of that family you were once lost and not part of God's film, but now he's found you. He's wounding you back to him right now. Now just pray this prayer and be saved. Amen. Just pray this prayer. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. God loves you. A lot of you don't even know what love is in this world. Take, people take for granted on this stuff. But there's 75% of the world, all they know is hatred because that's all they were raised in. You know? And, and God loves you. I love you too. But you got to get right every day with God and say, God, I want my relationship, the evidence of salvation. To be right with you every day. And you know what? God knows. Year pass. And God's going to help you with it. You might have a, a time of defeat. But God's going to give you a victory around the corner. For the faithfulness of, of understanding those things. And allow, yielding to God through, through that all. You know? And God is with you. Remember, Emmanuel is always with us. God is with us. Amen. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Honus brings peace to passes on his sin. Never seven, never broken. May God Almighty be with us, his people, and the people that are accepted, that are part of our family now. And then thank you, Father. I praise you, the blessing of shalom. Wholeness that brings us to peace, the peace of God. Through his wholeness of his word, through prayer, and through sharpening each other, testifying of what God is doing through each of us, and the, the, the defeats that come into victory, and, and testifying these things, and strengthening one another, bring us forward into a great people that God is a proud of. And we thank you, Father, and praise you. Amen. Shalom to you. Keep Keep the faith. Don't stop it. Don't stop. Just because you got everybody around you that wants to be bad, you stay the way God wants you to be. Amen. Even if everybody around you is in the world, hardcore in the world, and wanting to hurt you and lie about you, you stay with God no matter what. You stay with the King of Glory, and you never leave the sight of God. Amen. Through the Spirit of God. That that seduces us and helps us and woes us and, and is there when we cry. He's there when we're happy. He's always there. The Spirit of God. Amen. Shalom to you. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Amen. Don't stop 
loving God. Don't stop doing what's right, even if everybody is wrong in your city and you're the only one right. Keep doing what's right in God's sight. Amen. Shalom. Amen.